Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Soundscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called, uh, well, it's a study after Robert Minor, Robert Cornell Minor, near New London, and I painted it uh, last week. Yeah, yeah, was uh, <laughs> just checking myself. I made uh, quite a few changes to it, and that's well documented in the members area, my reasons why, um, and uh, I'm just a cocky so-and-so who thinks he can improve on the masters, so um, as some masters, I don't feel like I can improve on uh, George and S, um, and usually not on like someone like John Francis Murphy or Charles Warren Eaton, but Cornell Minor, he, there were some things I didn't like, like some of the, the tree, I'll tell you what, the tree, the, the mass of trees on our right had a real super bend in it, which just annoyed me. I straightened that out. Uh, and I did some other things too, quite a few other things, but it has a feel very similar to his. It has that toneless feeling and I really enjoyed doing the painting. Um, so what am I painting on? That's what you want to know. You want facts. I'm painting on hardboard right now. It's been coated with two layers of transparent gesso and I sand in between layers. So uh, that, that, that brownish reddish color of the hardboard uh, just works great for toneless painting in my view. Um, some people are the opinion, like I tell you who, Birch Harrison who wrote a book on painting you should check out. It's called Landscape Painting by Birch Harrison. Um, his feeling, strong feeling was that toneless work should be done on a red, that the brown was a bit archaic, you know, but let's face it, people like uh, Emile Corot painted on brown, and I bet you quite a few other toneless did too, it's just something he's, you know, he thinks is important, um, and I do think there's actually, it's quite reddish, you know, once I get in there, now what color am I painting on there, well, it's burn number, I'm doing my underpainting, um, slash drawing with uh, burnt umber and I let it dry for a couple of days and then jump back into it and uh, I'm real proud of the way the painting came out it's what is this an 8 by 10 I think it's an 8 by 10 um, it looks nice in the frame and it will be in my store which uh, there'll be a link under the video there I'm gonna do this one for uh, I'm gonna do 2.99 on this one it's a good little painting yeah I don't I don't usually sell them in a frame um, I used to be able to do that but framing just got really out it's out already outrageously expensive out here in New Zealand we're on an island here as you know everything the world over is getting expensive except my prices actually have been lowered since um, the uh, the uh, undisclosed uh, virus of unknown origin has really affected my gallery business and my studio gallery business so that's one of the reasons why I kind of set up a thing where I'm putting the paintings in my store and I'm using a video still um, which doesn't show you the etched detail as well but um, it shows you very accurate color and of course you have the whole video to see and get a good idea what the painting looks like so I'm going to read you a little bit about Robert Cornell Minor he's not a mainstream tonalist bit of a second stringer but um, I would like, uh, he's definitely a member of the Barbizon school slash toneless, and uh, um, I'd like to read, read you, this is Wikipedia, you ready? Robert Cornell Minor, 1839 to 1904, American artist, was born in New York City on April 30th, 1839. Hold on. I'm gonna skip a lot of this biographical stuff. Uh, he studied in New York with painter Alfred Cornelius Howland and then went abroad in 1871 to continue his artistic education. I uh, visited various galleries in England before traveling to Barbizon, France. I've been there where he studied under Diaz. Diaz is cool. I should make a little note about Diaz. I've never done a study after Diaz, but um, he's really cool. I should. He later studied in Antwerp under Joseph Van Lupin and another guy whose name I can't pronounce right now. Uh, 
Um, and on his return to the United States in 1874, he opened up a studio in New York. He painted for many years out of his studio in the old university building of New York University. Uh, he painted in the Andriac Mountains and later in Waterford, Connecticut. He became known, well known for his landscapes resembling the Barbizon School under the influence of George Ness and Alexander Helwig Wyatt. He also began to paint in a tonalist style. The differences between Barbizon and tonalism, they're not that great. I just have to say, one's American, one's French. I would say maybe the American school is a little more luminous, a little more glowy. I don't know. I'm no expert in art history. Or well, just a painter. Or well, just do paintings. Uh, ba -ba -bum -bum. I don't want to get into that. Over the course of his lifetime, he was a member of this place, that place, the other place. Um, Miner was plagued with bad health during the last decade of his life. Despite later speculation, it did not materially impact the quality of his output. And the, and the suggestion that impacted the quality of his work is a misreading of the increasing abstraction in certain of his later toneless paintings. Hey, you know, I did. I was looking up and I you know, I saw, if you put his name into a search, actually you'll see the blog post of the little, like, it was one of the hundred days, I think, of tonalism. Super neat, really interesting composition. Uh, a super cool painting. Um, this one's a little more, um, you know, conservative, I would say. Um, anyway, there's some information on uh, Robert Miner and I really... Uh, Really enjoyed uh, doing a study after his work, and uh, today uh, in the studio I did a work after old good old Dupree, Jules Dupree, who is kind of you know does work very similar to this. So, um, and I changed a lot in the Dupree too. I know I'm bad. I'm a bad uh, bad guy, but uh, you know the way I see it is like if I make changes, it's like who cares? You know, I'm into making good-looking paintings and. Um, there's certain characteristics that you'll pull into your work um, by doing um, a study after another artist that would never ever happen um, using a photo as reference or, or just working strictly from the imagination. Unless of course you were a genius and I'm not really that, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm a reasonably smart guy, but no, no, not a genius and um, uh, just a hard worker really, you know. Um, what else we want to talk about? So the palette here again now in the members area. Just to to push you over into the members area. This video is about three, going to be about three hours long, a little longer because there's a section at the beginning where I have the reference up. You can see it clearly, and um, I'm talking about the differences and the whys and wherefores, and 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 um, most of it is compositional. Oh, here's another thing. You see that little area that. I'm painting in the back there. He had that super dark and um, I lightened it considerably just to push it into the distance more. You know, and it's not like I'm correcting Robert or anything. I'm just, I'm just, you know, doing what I do. Yeah. Robert, I respect you, man. Yeah. Don't be offended that I changed your, your stuff. Hey, you know, this is my approach to doing studies. And, you know, it's so common in the music world for, you know, somebody to do a, 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 a cover of another artist's song. Nobody thinks twice about it. And sometimes they become way more popular than the original, you know. I can think of innumerable examples. Uh, hey, uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door, you know, Bob, D Bob Dylan's version's cool, but Guns N' Roses' version is super cool, too, you know. Uh, Live and Let Die, same case, you know, Paul, Paul McCartney's version is fantastic. Guns N' Roses version is also super cool, super cool, very different, but super cool. So that idea is, was knocking around in my head for a long time, and that's one of the reasons why I'll make a change. I'm riffing, you know, I'm, I'm also a musician, more like a producer, songwriter, singer, um, well, yeah, I guess I have to own up to, to, to being a musician as well, but I don't uh, play that well, but I have um, abilities uh, with the, uh, the uh, studio to, uh, to make up for those uh, inadequacies uh, very well, you know, so uh, we'll get on back to the point. Um, 
a lot of the greens let's talk about the there's greens i'm painting these greens they're dark but uh you know i'm slamming a ton of red in there and not just red i mean by red it'd be burnt uh burnt sienna burnt umber it looks like a heck of a lot of burnt umber in the darker green um, and then in the lighter greens, I'm putting in the burnt sienna and orange. And that's a big secret. And you know what? I'm happy to give you these secrets because I really appreciate you coming around and spending time here. Even though I'm, you know, I'm always, you know, talking about the members area, which, by the way, only costs six bucks a month. I mean, that didn't go up with inflation, did it? No. No, it didn't. And you can tip in, tip out, right? So, but even even without going to the members area you're you're still seeing the entire painting process happening here it's sped up it's sped up by quite a lot like 13 times faster than i painted it um and the real-time thing you know let's face it maybe you don't have three hours <laughs> uh, what i recommend you do though if you do get into the live session just keep it open in a tab and watch a little here and there a lot of people like to follow along and in a case like that if you do join the members area let me know because some, sometimes it could be hard to find the reference for uh, one of these especially if it's been altered by yours truly uh, you just shoot me an email and say hey mike i'm a member send me your reference for this and that uh in painting you did and uh, or study you did and uh um you know i will i'll do it because i appreciate my members as i appreciate you uh, who are you know hopefully a subscriber you can do that too i'm not one for you know saying I like the videos but i do like comments the comments have been sort of drying up because you guys are just taking me for granted oh good old mike he doesn't need no he doesn't need no positive input or feedback he's just he's gonna give us a video either way and i will i really will but i i, I absolutely do if you are the kind of person that will leave a comment on a youtube video then leave me a comment just say ah oh, i watched your video i liked it mike <laughs> or a smiley face or uh, your thumbs up or no you don't tell me anything negative or derogatory though because that's just going to bum me down bum me out who needs it yeah um anyway uh the other aspect uh you know other thing i want to point out uh, a lot of people know I've, I've talked about this quite a lot i have a lot of videos up i've been doing this a while but the the blues in the sky are actually not blue they're gray and um, i have a student here in a good old Whangarei, new zealand who uh, we're going to be we well she's an overall student i'm working with her on drawing and uh, even computer stuff and, and all kinds of things but um uh, we're going to start doing some painting together and i was pointing out to her that black is actually in the blue family and you can tell when you add white to it that gray looks the gray I use looks like a blue and it's all about context of course an actual blue like a phthalo blue or ultramarine blue would be way bluer but uh, gray does a good job and you'll be surprised how many masters never even used blue um, they just used a gray um, and you put a gray next to like a warm tannish color or yellow or something it's going to read as blue so secrets and tips ahoy uh, you know another thing uh just speaking of things that change you know you see that like there's like a little lake or river in the distance there he had that dark um, and, and the reason he had a dark is because obviously it was reflecting the dark um, stuff in the distance um, but i thought it was just hard to read hard to understand that way so i made it lighter i just disobeyed the laws of physics uh, because um, I have a license. It's a license to paint. It's called an artistic license, and I know how to use it. Anyway, thank you for watching this video today. Thank you for listening to me burble on. Appreciate you coming around, and uh, I'll be back pretty soon with another video. You know it's true. Um, maybe, uh, maybe this, um, the Dupree I did today, or I might just throw one of those minis in again. I know they're not as popular. Yeah, you know, whatever. It's 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 all good, you know. Somebody will like it. That's how I see it. Uh, you know, I I just basically like share just about everything stuff, so I do here. That's just my that's way, the, you know. Um, but um, 
video like screenshots. Question. Thank you. Another, uh, wrap session with you. Another video. Do me a favor. Do me a solid. Please take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Do your best to love your enemies. It's just a good idea. It'll keep you from turning evil. And uh, take good care. Stay out of trouble. God bless you.